This is actually, this is to follow on the post that I made about reinforcement learning, you know, about alpha zero uh, against stockfish. So um, they're programming using what is called a Mark, uh, Markov uh, decision process, right, MDP. And the computer uh, uses something that is called Q learning, right? But I want to show you because this is a, something you can apply to not just uh, computer science. It works for fitness, it works for life, right? So I'm not going to call it a strong fit theory, first of all, because it's called Q learning, so it's not mine. And that sounds very arrogant, but it's cool because you can use it even for programming, uh, fitness, but you can use it for life. So that's the, the result, right? So. Um, that's the Q-learning, right? So what do you get? You get the current level, wherever you are. Let's, say, let's, talk, let's imagine this is life. This is where you are right now, right? Plus your learning rate. So for life, your learning rate could be something like life skills, right? Uh, that allows you to, to learn from everyday experience, right? And how, how fast are you at this? Are you getting better or not? If you look at fitness, it would be obviously your athleticism, right? Because that's, that's talent. And how fast are you are learning movements, right? Do you get just movements right away? So obviously it has to do with your nervous system, your, your inherent talents, things like this. But we could also go at, um, from an athlete would be like, for example, are you coachable, right? Because coachability is going to matter a lot, but how fast you learn. Are you willing to, is your ego too big that you can never learn from anything, right? So coachability, ego, athleticism, can you get smarter towards fitness, right? Because obviously understanding the why you do things will always he help you. So all this is part of the learning rate. And then this here is what they call the, this part right here is what is called the learned value in the, the Q learning, right? So we're going to start with the reward. Reward, that's what would you get out of good programming, right? It has to do uh, of state versus action. Like the state that you're in will influence the action. Influence of the action will influence the state that you're in, right? So you're going to see that, let's say for fitness, it would be, for example, the nervous system, right? You're going to be in external talk. Uh, here, external talk more so are going to influence your nervous system toward the sympathetic side, right? Is that what we're shooting for or not? That's going to be state versus action. That's the reward. That's what you're going to get. And in life, obviously, state versus action is what you're going to get out of your actions in life, how they're going to modify your mental state, things like this on that time. And that's actually a tremendously important part, right? Epsilon. Epsilon is short-term versus long-term goals in the sense of if I'm looking to our long-term goals, right, I'm going to have to increase the randomness of my actions. What do I mean by this? Imagine you have a mouse in a maze, right? That's, that was part of the post. And uh, in that maze, you have, let's say, watering holes, and you also have zappers, electricity that I can basically tell you, no, don't go that way. And you're trying to get to the cheese. If you are only basing on what is the best decision, the second you get into a watering hole, you found a plus. Every time you're there and you go outside and you get zapped, naturally you're going to go back to the watering hole, right? Because the best situation is not getting zapped, is to be in the watering hole. And that's where, that's where you're going to end up everywhere. But if you want to uh, find the cheese, you're going to have to have randomness into your mode of action. You're going to have to go around, choose, ro choose roads, not knowing if you're going to get zapped or not, right? But you're going to have to keep trying random new things in order to get to the, chi to the cheese. So that's what the epsilon is, is for how much randomness are you, gonna, are, you gonna, are you gonna try to get to the cheese. For fitness, it would be, for example, short versus long-term goal. If I have a powerlifter that is four weeks, out, uh, four weeks out of meat, I'm not gonna try new stuff, right? It's only four weeks out. Right now, I'm looking for a short-term goal, so I'm gonna basically keep him on the same structure that I know works, because right now is not the time to try new stuff. That's the short-term goal. But as I get further, let's say in the off-season, I have one year to prepare a guy for the Olympics or whatever, then that would be the time where I can try new things, right? But only through new things can I discover new ways, new, new roads in order to get to the cheese. Because remember, it's not about the watering hole, right? That's one step. That's that one competition. But that's not the cheese. The cheese is way, way down the line to get you stronger. So you have to understand that the longer-term goals requires more randomness. You have to try new things. That's what the epsilon is. It's called, and in a, um, the Markov decision process, right? The state of action is going to be, is going to, is going to mean, uh, that's called what they call epsilon greedy, which is uh, basically going for short, long-term goals over short-term goals, which require you to do more random moves. That's how actually alpha zero learn through also random, uh, random move to see what will happen. And then you have 
very important, the estimate optimal future value. So for fitness, it would be how you look at, at a workout. How did that workout make you feel? And what, think, what do you think you're going to get out of it, right? So in life, it would be, what are your dreams? How big are, how big are your dreams? The bigger they are, the more the learned value will be. But if you start with very, very small dreams, that's only so far you can go. So the idea of that is, what do you think you're going to get out of life? Are you shooting for the watering hole? Because that's all you're going to get. Are you trying to get the cheese? And if you do that, then you'll accept all what is required. But without you tr understanding that the goal is the cheese, if you're just content with the watering hole, that's about as far as you're going to go. Right? And the current level, that's basically to save its principles of your method. What does that mean by that? It means you have to forget what happened. Success or failure doesn't matter. The point is, in any situation, you're going to get either success or failure. That is a scoring system, right? To tell you this was a good way to go, this wasn't. But the second you have either or success or failure, you have to be able to get the lessons out of it and forget and move forward, right? So it doesn't matter whether you had your success or failure. This was just a zero or one, like a plus or a minus. That was good, that wasn't. But the second you have that, you need to forget it happened, right? That's, that's the very things you have to keep moving forward, basically. That's what the minus current level says is do not get stuck. Uh, like, for example, uh, it's, to some people, it's very easy to avoid, avoid failure. Enfin, not to avoid, but like, I never mind failure. I get hit, I realize, okay, it's what Edison said. It's not about, I, I didn't fail at making a light bulb. I found a thousand ways not to make one. Right, that's the thing, is in order to get with that aspect of randomness, you just keep trying stuff, keep trying stuff. Every time you have a failure, it's okay. You have to get the lessons out of it, right, the principle out of it, and go, okay, and move on like it never happened. It's the same thing for success, though. If every time I remember what the success was, it's the watering hole, I'm always going to want to go back to that. That means all my decisions are going to be based really on fear. Every time I get zapped, I'm going to remember there's a watering hole over there. That's not a good thing because I'm just going to want to go there. The point of all this is you have to remember you're going after the cheese in that maze, right? So no matter what, whether you have failure or success, get the lessons from the experience and forget the experience ever happened. That's why computers are so good, because they have no ego, no fear. So uh, once they've learned the lesson from a position, they just forget it and move to the next one. That's their greatest strength. And so, but that's, you know that from, from life in general, you have to be able to get the lessons from life experience and then forget they happen and just move forward. Otherwise, you're always going to get stuck in the, same, in the same loop. So that's why I like this so much, because it really reflects how you should learn in life, right? It's where you are versus like your life skills, can you actually learn anything from it versus the reward from each action versus the kind of goals that you set, how big are the goals and just get the lessons out of things and just keep moving forward.